Welcome to Electron Line. Now, of course, we understand the structure of atoms and we understand that the energy levels of electrons within the orbitals within atoms and molecules are quantized. In other words, the uh, electrons can only exist in certain energy states. And so when we go to the most simple atom in the universe, the hydrogen atom, we have a single proton, a single electron. We know that the electron can exist in particular orbits around the nucleus and that these positions are quantized. They cannot exist in between any of these orbits. They can only exist in orbit number one, orbit number two, orbit number three. Each one of those orbits, of course, is associated with a particular energy level. So that when, a, when an electron has to jump from one level to another, it can only do so by either absorbing the exact amount of energy difference between the two levels, or when it, when it falls back down from a higher uh, energy level to a lower energy level, the, the electron will then give off a precise amount of energy in the form of a photon with that exact energy equal to the energy difference between the two energy levels. Of course, back then, during the days of Balmer, they didn't know that. They did see the spectrum, they saw the emission spectrum, they saw those specific colors, but they couldn't prove or they couldn't show that that energy was actually quantized, that it actually depended upon an electron or something jumping from one level to another. However, over the time when he studied these very carefully and tried to manipulate the numbers around trying to explain what these jumps were, Balmer finally managed to come up with an equation that described the the uh, wavelength of the photon being emitted in the emission spectrum to an exact number associated with the energy level that it was in and then represented the number of the level and you can see that he used the number 3646 in his equation that was a constant times n squared n being the energy level going from one to two to three however of course when we use the energy level number one the wavelengths were in the ultraviolet rays which he couldn't see at the time but he did realize that if anything jumped down to the second level from a higher level it would then give off a visible light spectrum uh, type of energy and so therefore when he used uh, four was of course the two squared from the second level to which things jumped down to and so n would be a number higher than two three four five and so forth and then of course the units they used back then were angstroms one angstrom is one tenth of a nanometer and so when he calculated these values he was then able to associate the specific energies that were emitted in the form of various colors to that particular wavelength when an electron jumped from the third level down to the second level, the wavelength emitted then could be calculated. It turned out to be 6,563 angstrom, which is 656.3 nanometers, which is in the red uh, portion of the rainbow colors of the electromagnetic spectrum in visible light. When things jump down, when electrons jump down from the fourth level down to the second level, the wavelength given off, or the light given off, had a wavelength of 486.1 nanometers or 4,861 angstroms, and then that associated with a color that was kind of turquoise green. When an electron jumped from the fifth level down to the second level, the wavelength emitted, or the photon emitted, had a wavelength of 4,340 angstroms, which was a light that was more in the purple color. And then when something jumped from the sixth level down to the second level, then the wavelength was 4,102 angstroms. Again, that was in the purple uh, range of colors. So you can see that by coming up with the equation, Balmer was able to show that the jumps were actually quantized. They were associated with an energy number starting from three, then to four to five. And so he knew that when he called the nth um, energy level two, that anything and then any electron jumping from a high level down to the second level would produce light in an exact amount of wavelength. And it was due to an exact jump recognized by a level higher than three, uh, higher than two down to level two. A tremendous discovery. This actually proved, in a way, that light was also quantized. Not necessarily that light was quantized, I should say, but that the jumps were quantized. The energy levels in an atom were quantized. You could be at this level, you could be at that level, but no level in between. At least that's what that equation showed. Kind of interesting, go ahead and try this equation. Plug in, for example, three, and plug in three there, so we get nine divided by nine minus four, which is five. So nine fifth times 3,646. Let's go ahead and grab a calculator. So we have 3,646 times nine divided by five, 
And sure enough, we get 6,561, slightly off because we need one more decimal place to come up with a very accurate 656.3 nanometers. But as you can see, Balmer did a tremendous job showing that the light that we saw from an emission from an excited gas, in this case hydrogen gas, had quantum jumps. The energy levels could be at various levels, quantized from one level to another, but not in between. That's the start of quantum mechanics, realizing that things at this level, at the quantum level, are quantized.